All right, so given all this extra work to do LU decomposition just to just to solve uh, solve for uh, solve for x in a matrix, uh, the real question is what else can LU decomposition to do? And this is a fair question because if it can't do anything else, then why have we gone through all this work? Well, it can actually do a lot of things. One of the things that it can do is that it can help find uh, find a inverse. It makes it a lot less work to find A inverse if we've done LU decomposition first. Uh, it can also help us officially uh, find uh, the determinant of A, the determinant of, of a matrix A. And uh, another thing that it can do is help us find uh, the condition, uh, if, I, if I just, the condition number of A. And so it can help us uh, with this as well. And so let's see how. Uh, the first thing then that I'm going to go over is how to find A inverse. All right, with with the LU decomposition, how does the LU decomposition find a, help us find A inverse? So find find A inverse using LU decomposition. Okay, and so uh, one of the things that we need to do is we need to realize that if we know we're solving this equation, ax equals b, and if we're solving it a lot of times, like for a lot of different b's, then LU decomposition is really good because remember there was step one, uh, find LU, step two, uh, solve for d, uh, for D, step three, solve for X. And these two were relatively easy. They were just, this was, um, this would, was forward sub substitution and this was back substitution. And so really the hard step is finding LU. And so the nice thing about this is let's say we're solving this equation ax equals b and we have to solve it for a whole bunch of different b's uh, and and what we could do well we don't have to redo step one once we've done step one well the only thing we have to do if we redo if we have a different b's is we have to redo steps two and three and so we can actually uh, rewrite the matrix inverse so let's let's write this out so a uh, a inverse uh, equals uh, the identity matrix, right? Because that's the de the definition of the of the inverse, and I'm going to rewrite this equation. So it, what we're going to do is we're going to actually try to turn this into a problem, sort of like that. And so if if we have this a a inverse equals i, I'm going to rewrite i. So I'm going to say i. I'm going to rewrite i as I'm going to call that e1 e2 and e3 and and these are just the columns of i and so if i if i had let's and i'm just going to show you for the example uh, of a 3 by 3 then e1 would be 1 0 0 uh, e2 would then be 0 1 0 and e3 would then be uh, 0 0 1 okay so you get the idea uh, and then I'm going to move down here, and then I'm actually going to do the same thing with a inverse. I'm going to I'm going to divide that into three pieces, and I'm going to call this a1 inverse. That'll just be the first column uh, of the inverse of, of of a inverse. So uh, then we'll have the second column of of a inverse, and then we'll have the third column of a inverse. Okay, so so that's that's what we're going to have here, and then we can just realize then we have uh, okay, so a times this is equal to this. Well, actually, if, if we realize it, a times uh, I, I got room to write it over here, so that'll let us see a little more. A times uh, the first column of of a inverse uh, is going to equal uh, e1 okay so that's going to equal the first the first column so if we can solve this problem then we get the first column and a times the second column 
inverse, whatever this is, right, because this is unknown, that's going to equal uh, E2 and then A, A3 inverse equals E3. And so here we just have the familiar problem. We, we have the familiar problem of, of uh, we'll just call of our AX equals B, that's our A, that's our X, and that's our B. Okay, so we're solving this AX equals B equation for uh, three different times, or, or however many different times, depending on the size of A. And we're solving this equation. And the nice thing about this, of course, is the only two steps of this we have to do are steps two and three. We have to do those uh, for each one, but we don't have to find LU over and over again because once you found LU once, uh, you found it for all time. And so this is a this is a very nice way uh, we can use A inverse uh, to compute the LU decomposition. And and again, uh, to be clear, yeah, for each one of these we'll have to solve for D. So we'll have one D based on uh, based on this equation, uh, and then we'll use that D, and we'll have to solve for this X, which is uh, which is this a inverse? So that'll so help us solve. So we'll do we'll do a forward substitution to solve for um, for some d, and then we'll use a, a, a back substitution in, with the u. So in conjunction with the u to find uh, to find our 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 answer for the for the a inverse. Okay, and so that is how you compute the inverse using LU decomposition.